While initially unknown to us, Bristol, Rhode Island is home to the longest running 4th of July parade in the country. It's also known as the most patriotic town in the United States. We could not think of a better place to visit for the 4th of July celebrations. We arrived on July 3rd, the evening, when they were going to have the fireworks display to check out the town prior to the parade the next day. Everywhere we looked, the red, white, and blue bunting and flakes were ready for the celebration. We enjoyed walking through the town, looking at the effort everybody put into this holiday celebration. The 4th of July begins on Flag Day with concerts on the town green every evening. With today being the last concert, everybody will move their chairs and blankets to save their spot on the parade route. On our walk back to the dinghy, we enjoyed the historic buildings that have been so well preserved and repurposed. In 1938, the waterfront was devastated by a hurricane that hit the area, sending water surge from the hurricane over 13 feet above high tide level. It was then time to get back to the boat to prepare dinner and enjoy the evening fireworks. The morning of the 4th was a perfect summer day with bright sunlight, hot temperatures and building humidity. It was fun to watch children and adults alike in anticipation of the parade. The parade then kicked off, led by the first responders. There were also marching bands from Wisconsin and Minnesota that marched in the parade. And of course, every parade needs the Milkman Marching Band. A team of eight Clydesdale the horses then came through, and horses did what horses will do. Thankfully, the cleanup crew followed closely behind.
About an hour and a half into the parade, the heat got too much for Darcy and I, so we retired to a local bar and grill for lunch and beer. They had the parade on TV, so we were able to watch the action. Turns out the parade was two and a half hours long. Once the parade was over, we dinghied up to the boat and noticed a number of boats with foreign flags flying, so we thought we would see who was celebrating the 4th with us. This boat, a cappella from Belfast, was from Belfast, Ireland. The Greyhound was from Hamburg, Germany. And this 82-foot wow. oyster sailboat was from London, England. I guess time heals all wounds. The next morning, it was time to head back to the mooring. It was another hot, humid day. As we made our way down the Narragansett Bay, we passed this massive auto carrier bringing cars into Providence. As we approach the Newport Bridge, it appears we may be in for a foggy ride home. As we got out into the open ocean on our way back to the mooring, we were greeted by pea soup fog. With our GPS and chart plotter operating, we knew exactly where we were. Our radar was also generating reflective signals and our AIS also assisted with identifying nearby boats, with both of these devices overlaying on our chart plotter. Then, out of the fog appeared the entrance buoy to the Sakonet River, our gateway back to the morning. Both the chart plotter and radar had this buoy exactly where it was supposed to be. As we made our way up the Sakonet River and closer to the warmer landmass, the fog lifted and we had clear visibility back to the morning. However, the fog remained on the open water behind us. Later that evening, we were safely on our mooring with the fog still visible in the distance. Our evening discussion then began on our next trip. Do we head to Martha's Vineyard to the east or Black Island to the west?